530. It's raining. Let's go get some tractors. See what it looks like in a Dooley's and bigger. Nice place here though. Welcome back to the channel everyone. This video is gonna cover the restoration slash repaint of my 1957 Oliver Super 55. This is actually the second video about this tractor. In the first video we got the tractor running and made sure it drove and everything worked. But this video combines all the footage I have, so if you want a more in-depth look at getting the tractor running, check out the link in the description. So I won this tractor in the Henry Stetler online auction down in Boyertown, Pennsylvania. And I'm at school, so I actually had my dad go down and pick it up for me. Alright, we're loaded. The, you may have to adjust it. So you may have noticed that Case VAC on the trailer there. And it was actually about one town over from where this auction was. We saw it on Marketplace and it was a pretty good deal. And there's extra space on the trailer, so that's why we have that one. So we need more projects. Going across the Hudson River, Cuomo Bridge, nice rainy day. My dad and my brother got the tractors off the trailer, and the first step with the Oliver is to give it a nice wash. We do have a gas pressure washer, but it's, actually we have a couple, but they're both broken. So this gas, this electric one, my dad picked up for pretty cheap, but it works fine. Well, my dad couldn't help himself but to tear into this tractor before I got home. All he did, well, I say all he did, but it was a lot of work, but he got the sheet metal off and the tires off, and both rear tires were flat, and one of the rear rims was really messed up, so he got those all fixed up, which is it's kind of the grunt work, but it does save a lot of work for me. And also a lot of times in the background of my videos you'll hear a wire brush going or see my dad wearing a mask and that's because he's doing this. He does uh, cleans a lot of the parts for me. As you can see the gas that's coming out of the tank doesn't look too bad. It's definitely varnished and would not run on this but at least it's not rust.
this exhaust pipe that came on the tractor is not right. It should curve more and be held up kind of by the hood. So this is my new Oliver Super 55, but he hasn't done anything with the engine or mechanical stuff, so let's try and get it running today. Get these spark plugs out of here so I can get some oil in, in the cylinders. Just got some acetone and ATF in here. Spray a little down each cylinder. All right, this is just your standard four-cylinder Delco Remy distributor. Oh, looks good. No, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna throw new points in this. All right, I got a battery connected to the coil, and we should be able to see some sparking. I don't know if you can see that, but it is sparking. some gas in it and see what happens. Alright, there was too much oil in these cylinders. It's just fouling the plugs out. Turn the fuel on, the nights it runs. Pretty cool. Runs good. It's a healthy motor. These spin out rims are pretty cool. You can adjust the width of the rear tires very quickly with them, but it did add a lot of work having to clean up every piece individually, and it also makes those rear rims quite expensive. So I mentioned it earlier that one of these rims was messed up and my dad was able to fix that with some fiberglass. Not necessarily the right way to go about it, but for a tractor that's not going to get used too too much, it will be just fine. We did get new tubes to put in them. Uh, it, anytime you have a tire off, it's a good idea to just throw in a new tube. It's cheap insurance. And these these tires was one of the reasons that I bid on this tractor. They're in great shape and they're the field and roads which is a, I like that tread pattern if you plan on doing any work or getting into antique tractors 
you should uh, definitely invest in some nice tire irons because sooner or later you're going to have to change out tires and it's much cheaper to just do it yourself than have someone come every time you need to take a tire off. All right, I have the little fuel tank filled up and the battery rigged up again, so let's see if it starts up. And a couple weeks later, the Oliver is green. So my dad did this paint while I was at school. Uh, he may have taken some videos of it, so I'll put those in now. So the most common question I probably get about these tractors is how do you paint them? And we kind of don't really do it the right way. Since we don't have a really permanent paint booth, we just brush the primer by hand, as you see here, and brush the first coat of paint by hand. And that makes it easier because in some ways that makes it easier because you can paint the parts as you get them cleaned up and then just do all of them at the end with one or two rounds with the spray gun. So it looks good on the camera, but there are some spots that need a little bit of touch up. So what I'm going to do is start putting stuff on like the manifold and the dash. And once I get more stuff on, we will do one final coat. This valve cover is actually pretty nice. It's cast. As expected, it's pretty crusty in there, but that's not bad. It's a old engine. I got this first cylinder, the top dead center. You can see how loose those are. So I'll get these all tightened up. So I've talked about setting valves in previous videos. Let me know in the comments if you want a full video in depth on how to set valves, but basically just get the cylinder you want to set to top dead center and use a feeler gauge and tighten it down. So then I clean up the head surface one last time and most tractors including this one use a cork valve cover gasket and I like to put silicone grease on the head surface and then silicone RTV on the valve cover surface that way you can remove the valve cover in the future without damaging the gasket so instead of copper washers I have these washers that have like an o-ring embedded in them they should work well. All right, I'm going to put the distributor on now and got to get the timing on this right. So on this Oliver, the top right plug on the cap is going to the number one cylinder. So I spun the engine to top dead center on number one. And the easiest way to do that is you spin the engine with your thumb over the spark plug hole. And once you start hearing air come out, that is when it's on compression stroke. You look in the cylinder, look in the spark plug hole, and watch for when the piston comes to the top and stops moving. With it at top dead center on number one, spin the distributor to point at the number one cylinder on the cap, and then just drop the distributor in. Got it. This uh, gear here drives the tachometer, 
So you kind of have to spin it a little to get it to lock in. And then those two teeth are what engage with the camshaft. And it's in. Bin the distributor like that to get the timing adjusted even closer. All right, I put a couple more things on, but now we are ready for the second round of paint. It's pretty much most of the stuff, except for the stuff that doesn't need paint and sheet metal. So I, I did take some more time to sand down this dashboard because that's a piece of sheet metal I like to... So I don't really go crazy with preparing the cast because that's going to be rough no matter what, and that's just how the tractors look. The sheet metal, on the other hand, I do try and get it cleaned up good. Uh, it's not going to be like a... It's going to be as good as like a classic car. They go crazy doing those, but... So I'm going to get the paint suit on, mix up some paint, and we'll make this green. More green. you're using a Harbor Freight spray gun, make sure you clean out that hole. They seem to get clogged after pretty much every use. Well, I didn't get any video that night doing the paint, but I got the whole chassis painted. So now I'm going to put the sheet metal on and then we'll do one final coat. I want to put the radiator on and I've got a new lower hose. But I just got this flex hose for the top. That should be fine. All it is is a 90 degree. So this hose goes up over the radiator and into the air cleaner, but check out this hose clamp I had. It must have come off the uh, Formal M or something, because that says IH on it, and sure tight there, so it's pretty cool.
So now I'm doing the last round of sanding. And a lot of people don't like body work, and I'm not the biggest fan of it, but it's necessary if you want the tractor to turn out well. I There was a lot of work that went into this sheet metal before it got to the point where it is now. Uh, it's important to try and hammer out as many dents as you can after wire brushing all the old paint off. It's always good to use as little or as thin of coats of Bondo as possible because if you have a thick coat of Bondo it's liable to crack in the future or chip off so hammering out the dents and then putting thin Bondo and then even after I sand it here I do a little bit more Bondo because there are a couple little scratches and dents that would still show up after putting paint and then I vacuumed off the dust and used acetone on a paper towel to de do a final degrease and get the final bit of dust off. And I like to use this gray filler primer after doing the Bondo before the paint. It dries quickly and it fills in any little imperfections, but now it's ready for paint. All right, we just painted last night, and about 12 hours later, and I think it turned out well. It can always be smoother. You can always do more sanding and bondo, but this is fine for an antique tractor that might get used occasionally. Definitely looks better on camera camera doesn't pick up all the little imperfections but with the paint booth here there's not too much dust or things that land in the paint as I'm painting a little bit of orange peel or the ripples in the paint but this paint smooths out pretty nice I just have an old set of spark plugs that I use to keep paint from getting in the engine. I already put a new points and condenser and rotor when I got the tractor running the first time. Here's the number for the filter. Now I want to get the manifold on. It's got two different length studs. I got these ones new for McMaster car because the old ones were either rusted to the nut or broken. All right, let's get the starter in here. I'm gonna put some dielectric grease 
here just to prevent corrosion. but the guy wouldn't take it out so he had us and like that's awesome that he just yeah so this manifold uses these and little multi-layer steel like, gaskets so the individual down. ones Left. and i, I use this high temperature to sealant to i've had good luck with the sealant in the past and here to this manifold here. service wasn't perfect so it just adds some extra insurance then i also painted the <laughs> manifold <laughs> and heat shield with high temperature paint and that'll that? just yeah. keep it from he rusting too his, soon uh, so i just hooked up the wire here that goes to the amp meter from the battery and I also made these two battery cables. Here's the new battery, a group 34, maybe a little big for it, but now let's test and see if it cranks. Yep. And the tachometer works too. So we're pretty close to getting the Oliver running. It cranks over, has spark. The manifold's on. Pretty much all that's left is fuel and then put on the tires so we can roll it outside. But I want to drain the oil out and let it drip out while I put the gas tank on. I remember I'd checked this before first even trying to crank the engine for water. So, like, so there was no water in here. Uh, how much oil does this hold? Hopefully less than this uh, pan. Yeah, we're good. Now I know what you're thinking. Wow, this kid's sponsored by Shell Rotella. Nope, this was just on sale at Tractor Supply. All right, we're a little over full, but when we uh, start it up, it'll fill the oil filter and all the oil passages. Got the alternator on. The, what's that, a spider? The wire that goes from the battery to the exciter. This alternator needs that exciter wire and then the wire goes up to the amp meter i need to put some zip ties or other cable clips to hold. I'm still waiting on some parts from McMaster Car for the clutch pedal, the throttle linkage, and the seat, but we can try and start it now. You want me to get it? I'll get a milk crate to stand on. Is there any drain on the radiator? Is that mix stand I freeze? Yeah, this is what came out of the tractor. Oh. Looks like new. Well, the sediment bowl was leaking around the valve, as they all do. But I tightened that up, and it doesn't look like it's leaking anymore. Over here, no leaks, and it's 
not leaking out of the carburetor. If it pours out of the carb, then you're, you know your float is stuck. Got the fuel on and the battery connected. Is it neutral? My McMaster car stuff just came in the mail, and I needed this for the clutch, these clevis pins, and this other ball joint for the throttle. So let's get the clutch and throttle fixed. So the clutch, here's the pedal, and here's the arm that goes into the bell housing. And then this piece goes here so that it can spin as it actuates, and that goes like that. And cause them to bind up. I feel like something's wrong here. For the throttle, we need to connect this point with this point. That's the throttle lever. So it pretty much has to go from here to here. This tractor was missing the throttle linkage there, and we had ordered an, a used one. I have to cut but that used one ended up here. breaking the first time I tried to use it. So this one's going to be much stronger than the original. That's fine. Actually, I need to get some, I'm gonna get some lock nuts for those. Well, all right, I figured out the clutch. It's just supposed to be high off. So there's the free play where the throw out bearing now touches the pressure plate. And then there it's disengaging the pressure plate. Oh, and I have to take this tape off. Here's some new bolts. Got it. What? I just finished making this last bracket for the seat it goes through those two holes about like this here's the old one you can see where it's worn there there and at the ends and they just kind of had this big roll pin here and the holes weren't even in the center all right so here's the seat all finished it works it flips up like that. Don't know exactly what the point of that is. I guess so water can drain, but it can drain out those holes. But maybe it makes it easier to get on. And Grandma finished up the yellow on the Olivers. She was here over New Year's, so so thank you, Grandma, for uh, doing this. Looks good. Got this reproduction badge.
So these decals are supposed to go here and here. So I hold them on with some blue tape. I don't know exactly where these are supposed to go, like the measurements, as long as they're all in the same spot. When these came out of the factory, there wasn't someone with a tape measure going around making sure they're all perfect. They and then align the rest. And then you want to start in the middle You don't get any air bubbles or any creases or wrinkles. Now we just repeat the process. Got all the decals on. I also put the exhaust pipe on. It's just kind of temporarily because I need that bracket that goes to here, but that's fine for now. Now we want to move. Now I'm going to move it outside and we'll put the wheel weights on. Well, that's it for this video. I think the Oliver turned out well. Here's some before and after pictures side by side. And here's some clips from the Pennsylvania Farm Show. We went down there into Harrisburg to represent the Chevron Tractor Restoration Competition. Congratulations to all the FFA teams that were at the Farm Show. Your guys' tractors turned out well, and it was nice to meet some of you. So thank you for watching the video, and stay tuned for the next one.